Good, so welcome everyone in the meeting. It's, it's nice to have everybody back. I see, again, some familiar names and faces in the audience, uh, former ADA delegates and presenters and colleagues. Uh, it's always nice to see returning faces. I'm Karina Dutoy, I'm the program manager at the African Doctoral Academy, and I'm joined on the one hand by my colleague, Amal Shagal Henege. Those of you that have attended the ADA would have had good interactions with her as you were enrolling and, and confirming your courses. Um, I just want to let everyone know that we are recording this presentation and we will be posting it on our YouTube channel. So if you would like to refer back to any of the demonstrations that Kirchner is doing for us today, you can either go to the YouTube channel and we will also be posting some of the resources that are available to you on the Stellenbosch University website. It's free and open, so anybody can use it uh, regardless of, of where they are registered or working. Uh, please post your questions in the chat. I will be collecting them and we'll put them to Kirchner after our session at around 1 p.m. And yeah, you can also then um, ask him if there's anything that you would like him to repeat. He's able to do that. But unfortunately, you know, if our time runs out, we, we're going to have to make a plan to address your questions. So our presenter, Kirchner, is a librarian at Stellenbosch University Library, and he is the head of the Carnegie Research Commons. This is a space dedicated for masters and PhD candidates that aim to provide a quiet and focused environment for postgraduate studies. And his work specifically focuses on research and technical support for postgraduate students at SU. So today, he will be providing a hands-on demonstration of Mendeley reference management software and share the main features of the program. Mendeley is free to use and significantly reduces the time and effort spent on citing and referencing sources in academic works. I will post a Mendeley guide on the Stellenbosch University website. Um, again, as I mentioned, it is free and open to use. You will also notice that um, there is no presentation to share with you after the webinar, um, as Kirchner will just be using the, the um, everything live. So let me post the link here so you can also see where the resources are. And then, um, yeah, but again, you can reference the YouTube channel, also share it with your, your colleagues and your students as needed. So, uh, Kirchner, over to you. Please take it away for us. All right. Thank you, Corina. Um, yes, so uh, welcome, everybody, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak with you all. Um, yeah, so today is just going to be a very basic introduction to Mendeley and the services that it offers. It's an open source pr platform that's free to use for anybody with some, um, to, to a limited extent. And then uh, after that, uh, I uh, there are some paid options, but they are not really, they're more on an institutional level than they would be for an individual. But yes, so I'm going to get started. It's going to be, I'm a bit of a scatterbrain at times. So I do jump from one idea to the next, but I do have a certain pattern in how I present. So hopefully you, if you're struggling to follow, just uh, say so. If I'm talking too quick or I go too fast over something, please um, just ask uh, Karina to interrupt me. All right, so I'm going to turn off my video now and then I'm going to share my screen. Right, so I'm specifically going this way around. Um, I want everybody just to follow me as I go to the library's homepage, uh, the SU library's homepage. So in the search bar, bar whether it's uh, sorry. Chrome or... Sorry, Kirchner, okay. no, first glitch, um, we were still sharing the, the waiting room slide. Do oh. you mind just to reshare for us your share screen or your desktop? Um, it's, sure. it's now available to you, sorry. Uh, there we go. Ah, is this better? I should have yes. asked if uh, yes. you can see. <laughs> <laughs> we can see your Firefox. Okay, cool. Right, so basically all you have to do is you type in library.sun.ac.za. You don't have to put in www or http or anything like that. You just type that in and it will take you straight to the library's homepage. And <laughs> To get to the Mendeley Library Guide, where we're going to kick off from, is you click here on Library Guides. 
And just in the search, you can type in Mendeley. And there you'll see the first result will be Mendeley at SU. So the permanent link, I'm going to paste in the chat just so that you have access to that. And now I just quickly want to, uh, there we go. I'm very used to Microsoft Teams, but not used to Zoom at all. So I am going to, uh, as I'm figuring it out, I will uh, uh, maybe hesitate here and there. Right, so this is our library guide. Um, with all the basic information about one, what Mendeley is, how it can help you in your research and so on. There's a tab to how to install and set it up, how to add citations, how to create in-text citations and bibliographies, um, how to organize your research. You can even share and collaborate. And there's some fallback information here on some past workshops that we've had. And when we still had slides, we um, provided uh, these slides here. So yes, anybody uh, can access this page. Uh, it's not just exclusive to uh, Stellenbosch University students. Right, but to, we're going to get started with just a brief explanation of what Mendeley is. So Mendeley is a referencing management software package. Um, the ultimate aim of it is to uh, is a, a single place where you can store, uh, store all the information about the sources that you are using in your research. Um, with Mendeley, you are able to um, uh, attach uh, the relevant PDF, if it's an article or a book chapter or something like that, to the record, physical record. And uh, then it's a one-stop place where you can access all your uh, research, essentially. So now there are some uh, steps here, but I'm not going to go there now. But what's very important is that uh, if you are on the library guide now, you can just use this link. Otherwise, I'm just going to paste this in the chat as well. And I would like you to use that specific link uh, to get to Mendeley. So let's just remove the chat there again. So now you'll see that the first option here at the top is Mendeley, Mendeley Reference Manager for Desktop. And I'm thinking that a few of you uh, who um, already installed Mendeley based on the message that was sent out to you earlier would have likely installed this one. Uh, which is fine, but at, the at this stage, we are still focusing on Mendeley desktop over here. Um, and the reason for that is that the reference manager is very new and there's some features that is more uh, uh, user-friendly, but there's a lot of features that are not available in the reference manager that is available in uh, the Mendeley desktop. So that is why I recommend rather using this one for now. But I wouldn't worry too much about downloading this specific one immediately, um, since uh, uh, you will be able to follow on the reference manager if that's the one you've already created or downloaded. Right, so then, yeah, you just click on download Mendeley desktop for Windows uh, or Apple, depending on what uh, system you're using. It's even available for Linux. And then you can just save the file and you follow the steps from there. So I'm not going to do that now because it's already installed um, on my computer. Right. The next step that you would do here on the Mendeley homepage, once you've downloaded and, and installed the software, is to create an account. And that you do by clicking right there at the top where I just clicked. And again, now, because I'm already... Uh, um, connected, basically, uh, it just immediately takes me in. So I'm going to try just to show you what it looks like. And I'm going to say create account again. And this is what you'll find. Um, there will be a prompt to put in an email address and uh, to create a password. 
Uh, you don't have to use an institutional email. You can use a Gmail or Yahoo or whatever, whatever personal email you are using. Um, and then you just need to create the password and that will uh, allow you to take uh, further steps. So for now, I'm going to not sign in. I'm just gonna close there. And I'm going to switch over to the desktop application. Um, can everybody see my screen uh, fine? I just want to double check because sometimes yes, yes, yes. Is it all right? your, I can okay. see your reference manager and I can see your documents and okay. lists. Yeah. Okay. Right. So once you've signed into the Mendeley desktop, this is the um, the layout of the application. And just to give you an idea of what's what, on the left hand top corner is the your library. The top one, all documents, is where all of your references are can be viewed. Uh, there's a section that's recently added, that's recently read. You can even make mark some favorites. Um, and if you have your own publications, uh, they will uh, most likely fall here in this section as uh, in this section. But you can also create folders, subfolders for different purposes. Um, so. Uh, depending on what I'm doing, I'll use uh, create a different uh, folders. The other very, very nice um, feature is the groups here at the bottom. Uh, you are allowed to create up to six uh, groups, Mendeley groups, and you can then invite anyone uh, to, uh, to that group and you can then collaborate and have a shared uh, uh, database to work with. So just to show how that would work, I'm just going to remove this one since that was temporary. And now you're going to see there's all kinds of little things operating here. And that what's happening there as well is every time you make changes with Mendeley, um, there's some synchronization that has to take place with the cloud based. So that's the other nice thing about Mendeley is that um, all your references, everything that you input on the desktop application gets synchronized with uh, the on, uh, online platform. Uh, and so it is secure, you won't lose it, um, and it, you will be able to access it on any other computer uh, if you uh, go via the website. Right, so now let's create a group. Uh, let's say ADA 20 October. I'm going to create the group. And just for example purposes, I'm going to add Corina. Uh, Corina, you're see at a toy. That's the one, yes. Okay, so that's it, A. And I'm going to send an invite. And on her side, she'll get an invitation now to join and collaborate on this group. But Sorry. for the practice, Karina, sorry, I'm actually Karina Atsan. Um, I just thought you were checking my, my name and surname. Oh. Uh, okay, so please send again. Um, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. But I do see, and I think this might there's, be... There's another Cedar Toy at the university, so she'll also get the invitation. <laughs> <laughs> might be a bit confused by it. Uh, <laughs> so just Corinna at sun.ac.za. But I am seeing here something, and this is also what does happen. Um, so um, because it's an online platform, you're occasionally going to get um, these little messages. And Mendeley has sent out a message that says roughly around this time, they're going to do maintenance on their servers. And usually they say it will take about an hour, but then to sort out all the bugs that have been created by that maintenance, it might take another day or so. So I'm thinking this is what's going on now. Um, so that's why nothing is changing here and it might affect uh, us a bit later. I'm just going to see how that goes. So for now, I'm just gonna focus on some other features and then I'll get back to the group a bit later. Right, so the most important thing to take note of here is your uh, reference list. That's usually separated by your authors, the title, the year, what it is published in, if it's a journal, the date that it's been added. Uh, you've, here you've got a nice little drop down of what uh, it would look like. <coughs> 
Excuse me. Kirchner, sorry, can you just show us again where to add the group, create group? Uh, just, it's here just... at the bottom. Uh, so you have to scroll. Okay, yes. perfect. perfect. Oh, there we go. Now I see 8820 is there. Wonderful. So yes, all these will have different scroll down little button or areas, depending on how, um, how many folders and things you've already created. I think for anybody new with it, this will, there will be very little of all these additional things. Um, so, but I see now the group has been created, but I think I should maybe just uninvite. Nah, never mind. Right. So, and once you click on a source here, you'll see here to the right, you're going to get all kinds of information. I'm going to expand that a bit just to make it a bit more readable. You'll see that there's immediately the type, what kind of journal, uh, or what kind of source we are working with. Then you've got your title and you've got the authors. Note here how it is typed in. It is the surname, comma, and then the initials of the author. Um, the other option is to actually write the person's names out. You can do that. And then uh, depending on what referencing style you are using, um, Mendeley will automatically fix that. Um, so you'll see this is now what it looks like. Uh, um, to just give an indication that this is SUJV. And then you've got your journal title, you've got the year of publication, you've got the volume, you've got the issue, and you've got the pagination. <clears throat> and then at the bottom here, you'll see you've also got your DOI, which is a digital object identifier, which is a permanent link that most new journal articles come with. And that is very important these days for when you reference a journal article because it's the easiest way to get to that one. Um, you can uh, easily identify a DOI by the one zero full stop that it starts with. It always starts with a one zero full stop. Sometimes it is uh, hyperlinked, so then it would look like this. And that you can copy just like that. And nine times out of 10, it will take you to the source. And here you'll see now we find it. And that is why this little link is very, very important these days. Right. So now let's, before we continue here any further, um, I first want you all to do something else as well. Under tools, you'll see these, these, these two little features. The first one, install the web importer. Okay, so if you click on that, what's gonna happen is it's immediately going to take you to um, the extension for uh, Mendeley, uh, the Mendeley add-on on your browser, whether it is Chrome or Firefox or what you're using. And then you just click on that, get web imported for Firefox or for Chrome. And there will be all kinds of little features here. I already have it installed, so I'm not going to do anything with that now. And I'll show you now how that is relevant. Um, I just want to... Karina, do you, uh, how do I hide the little um, control bar at the top of the Zoom? I do not see an option there, so I'm just going to go this way around, and I'm going to close those two, and then I am going again to the library website. So the thing I think that most people struggle with with Mendeley is importing sources. So, um, <clears throat> because each platform has got a different approach or so. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to use uh, the databases that are available to uh, Stellenbosch University and also our search platform and how that would work to import. But then I will show Google Scholar as well. Um, right, in the chat, can somebody give me a topic, a research topic or something that I can look up to see what I can find? Now oh, Nas, ghost stories. Adoption loss, women Adoption leadership. 
Let's... Water, energy, food next is uh, Kirchner. You've got a lot to choose from. <laughs> I see, sir. I think I'm going to go with ghost stories. <laughs> That's interesting. Ghost stories. And let's say, and I'm going to add myth just to see what kind of would there be. So a side note or a side trick, a librarian's trick, um, is that if you start any word and you put a little asterisk there, uh, you're basically truncating the word. And what you're doing is now um, the, you're telling the database to look for every word that starts with these letters. So now it's going to look for myth, but it's going to look for mythical mytho mythology, uh, mythologies, uh, myths, all the different ver varieties. And that's a very handy way if you don't want to type out every single word that you want to be found. Because remember that a academic database like this is not like Google, where it's just going to assume you also want those results. It will only give you the results of what you are typing in. So ghost stories and myth. Now, in this instance, I am going to look for a book. So I'm just gonna select book here. I'm gonna apply the filter and see. Unfortunately, we don't have interesting ghost story features. But let's use this first one. It's got some interesting authors and stuff. So let's click on that. And we have our information and we have the book. And now you'll see that there's a couple of little highlighted little options or up thingies that can highlight here. So the two ones that's very important for any referencing manager is um, this RIS and this BIPTEX. But you'll see there's a Mendeley button here as well. So let's click on that. And now you'll see what can happen is it's gonna say it's, this little export failed. And the reason it failed is because pop-ups are blocked on most uh, platforms. So all we have to do is say allow pop-ups. And now what's going on? Okay, so now I'm going to try that again. It will prompt you the first time to do that. Yes, proceed with that account. And this is the bit that can get confusing for people, I think, because there's no notification. There's no confirmation that the source has now been exported. But let's go look in um, Mendeley itself. Let's press on the synchronize button. And let's just press here. Oh, it's a pity that Mendeley is so slow today. Murphy's Law. Mm. So while that is happening, I'm going to talk about RIS. So on any academic platform, you're going to find under whether you is like cite this article or export citation or whatever, there will be an option to export the RIS. So if what will happen is if you click on that, there will be a little download button. You can ignore that encoding. You click on download. And depending on how your uh, browser is set up, either it will automatically download it and the RIS file will go and lay in um, your downloads folder or where your documents get downloaded. So for now, I'm going to do that. And I'm just gonna save that's there, the Primo RIS export. But if you have set it to um, ask you every time before you download something, then all you have to do is you click on open with and then look for Mendeley. And you say, okay. And 
voila, now uh, the article is there. Um, let's quickly, I just want to show where it is added. And here you've got all the information, you've got the authors already added, you've got the volume, there's no pagination. Uh, so that's usually because there are no page numbers of, for this um, electronic uh, article, uh, but it can be other things as well. And there's also not a DOI. So this is the other important thing to uh, always remember with Mendeley. It's only as intelligent as uh, the person put, uh, putting in the in, uh, info. So you need to know what a reference, what information a reference requires. Otherwise, you can't just assume that once you've imported it from a database, that that reference is 100% accurate. For instance, even if there's just 12 pages in the document, it's a 12 page long document and it's numbered one to 12, then you've still got to say one to 12. Um, in South Africa, or oh, that is South Africa, Salambosch at least, um, we use sentence case with our titles. So tales in this case would be lowercase. Now I'm assuming that Lafcadio Hearn is, um, is a person, so I, that will remain uppercase. But here's an example as well. So how Korean would be uppercase, but everything else is lowercase except once a subheading. The subheading also begins with a capitalized letter. That's not a fixed rule, um, but in general, just be consistent throughout your references. So what's the other thing that we are missing here? Uh, we are missing the DOI. And so let's try and find that quickly because you do need, uh, that is something that should be available these days um, in a reference, uh, a part of your reference list. Okay, here we've got the PDF. I'm still trying to see if there's any information here. Does it look like it? Oh, well, here we go. I just realized I made a mistake. Um, I've been treating this as a journal article, but it's actually a book. So, here we've got the right information, then the page numbers isn't necessary and the DOI even isn't necessary. Um, but what would be is just to make sure that the city and the publisher is correct. Uh, some people uh, are happy if you just say Princeton's U, Princeton UP or uh, UP would stand for University Press, but you can also just keep it as is. But because Kirchner. this is, yes. Sorry, Kirchner, I'm just anticipating, I have so many questions, um, but I'm anticipating that, would it, would it be possible for us to also look at ins inserting a journal article into the database? Yes, 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 yes. Perfect. That's gonna be the next Perfect. one. Perfect, yeah. thank you. I just, yeah, I, I went the wrong way around. Usually I do start with a journal and then I do a book after that, so. That's Murphy's Law. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, but what we do have here is a book that is available electronically. Um, so sometimes you could actually add the URL to where we would find this book, but in most cases, it's not really expected. You can treat, if it's a book that you acquired electronically, um, you can treat it as a normally published book, as long as you have the publishing information with you. Right, so this one we've added now. Let's have a look at another way of acquiring information. So for that, I'm going to our databases A to Z list. And here, unfortunately, I think for um, those who are not Stellenbosch University students, uh, you won't be able to follow once we access here. Those who are will be able to log in via our authentication system. But I am going to start with EBSCOhost Research Databases. And then I quickly want to have a look. Oh, 
for other topics. And then a logical reconstruction. I'm going to look for that. While I was reading through the chats there now, I saw somebody mention the ISBN number uh, that can be added as well. It's never necessary to include the ISBN for a reference. Uh, reference. It's basically international serial book number, but it stands for. Um, and it doesn't really link to an electronic book, but it is a quick way of finding the details of a book if you want to look it up. You could just type in in Google ISBN and then you give that number. Climate and paleo environment during the low to lower to middle Miocene in northern to northeast Tunisia. Let's have a look at this one. So somewhere on this page, uh, there's going to be a couple of additional things. Firstly, there's not a PDF attached, but we've got this little thing, and I'll show you that information now as well, um, which is very, very convenient if there's no direct link to a PDF. But what we're looking for now is this little button, site or export. Both those are actually options that you can select. If I click on site, I'm going to get this information that gives a bit of uh, what the layout would look like of this article. And then you've got this little export to bibliographic management software. And if we click on that, you'll see there's a couple of, of well, quite a few options. <clears throat> and again, always just look for that RIS. And that's the one you want to export. And we say save. And you'll get it. And Mine is set now to open with Mendeley desktop. And there we have it now. And so now we've got palynological reconstruction of climate and paleo environment during the lower to middle Miocene in Northeast Tunisia as the title. It is already, writ uh, already written in sentence case. So that's fine. The authors looks fine. The, Journal title must be written in title case, as you can see here. So journal and geosciences are all capital letters because, um, but strangely, again, this isn't a fixed rule. Um, some campuses or universities might prefer it another way around. But the most important thing is if you're gonna choose it like this, make sure all your references are styled the same way. Um, consistency is more important than absolute 100% accuracy. So we've got the year of publication, we've got the volume, we've got the issue, and we've got the pagination. This is a massive journal. And we have our DOI here at the bottom. But I want to, yes, I'm interested in this article. I've now uh, sorted it, but I actually want to get a hold of the copy. So, Via EBSCOhost is a couple of options. You can say search for more info on this title in Google Scholar. Or if you do have EndNote, click. Um, let me type that out. You can just Google it and install it. Um, it's a very nifty little feature that immediately um, uh, gives you access to the article. Then you just click there, view PDF. And we've got our information, we can say download. And I'm just gonna save that under downloads for now. And now in Mendeley, we're going to look for this little button files. It's right at the bottom. We click on add file, we go to downloads, we select that one. And now it's been attached to this article. And now you click on it and there you can view the article with all the publishing information. And it's got a couple of nice other features as well. So you can put a sticky note. Um, so read this for overview. Um, or you can highlight. 
uh, section of the text. So say this bit is relevant. So let's just highlight all of that. You can change the colors. You can do a couple of things uh, with it. What's very important though, is if you've made these annotations now in Mendeley, but you wanna continue working in um, Acrobat Pro or another application, you need to click on file and then say export PDFs with annotations. Otherwise, these annotations will not be exported. Right. Now there's another nice little feature of Mendeley. And so I'm going to look again at another topic. I'm just going to use uh, commercial sustainable architectural rules, database violence. And I'm going to go back to EBSCOhost. And I'm just looking for one that has a straightforward PDF that I'm not seeing now. So let's use this one. Let's see if EndNote finds the article. It has, yes. And I'm just gonna download this and save it in uh, the same place as well. Now, the reason I'm doing this is if, if uh, I'm assuming that many of you have already progressed quite a bit with your research. And for, uh, so you likely have a lot of PDFs on your computer already. Um, and one of the nice things that uh, Mendeley does is you can either just directly import a PDF like that uh, or add a file, oh, sorry, 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 add a file and you click on that, say open, and there you'll see it now appears. So m many of the PDF articles will already have the metadata necessary um, to uh, fill in the uh, details here for a reference. This isn't an absolute guaranteed thing that every PDF article or thing that you have will do this for you. So you always, always need to double check the, uh, the data that comes with it to make sure that it is accurate. For instance, again, here, this needs to be fixed to sentence case. Um, I'm not gonna do the whole one now, but just to give an idea. Make sure that the title, journal title is right. Uh, that information is available. The DOI has been given. Uh, things like that. In the same light as that, what uh, Mendeley also has is what it's called a watch folder. Now, a watch folder is basically a, a folder where you say, okay, I want um, Mendeley to keep an eye on this folder and every PDF that I save in this folder must automatically be pulled into Mendeley. So I'm quickly going to just download a bunch of different articles. Um, let's just minimize there again. And I'm going to go to a different platform. I'm going to go to Science Direct. I don't know if I'll find many on this topic in South Africa uh, in Science Direct. No man, what's happening now? Yeah, no, absolutely not. Interesting, the mining, mine closure in South Africa. So that's probably thinking about ghost towns. Um, but so let's download a couple of articles, just random. Uh, 
ones. And I'm gonna say download eight, eight articles. So if you've selected multiple articles to download, it will come in a compressed folder like this. And now I'm gonna extract them all and I'm gonna select, I'm gonna go into documents and I'm gonna create a watch folder. And I'm gonna select this folder. And I hope now that they have all been extracted. And there we go. So now going back to Mendeley, we go back to the watch folder. And now I need to generate indicate which one is that. So I want to go to users, I want to go to my documents, and I want to tag the watch folder. I'm going to say apply. And I'm going to say OK. And there, all those articles that I downloaded have now been added. Now, what's nice about the Science Direct and um, Scopus, especially, is that they are both Elsa feed products, and Mendeley is an Elsa feed product. So the, the, these references will always be quite accurate and in comparison with um, some other databases. Uh, and it's already filled out and it seems very accurate, but again, you need to go and double check. There will sometimes just be something wrong. Um, I see you raise your hand, Karina. Yes, yes, Kirchner. Um, we just had a, a comment here from Charlie Kalinzi, who's an old face at the ADA or a regular face at the ADA, he's not that old. Um, he says, you're going a bit fast. Um, I wonder if you can just backtrack from here and then um, just quickly, or not quickly, in fact, um, at a good pace, just redo the process for us. For the watch folder. For the watch folder, please. I think it's, right. such a, it's such a cool feature. And then mm. if I can add my question, why would you put something in a watch folder and not an articles folder? Um, um, well, you could actually, that's the nice thing is you could actually just select uh, if you've already got a folder where you've saved all your articles mm. you just select that here okay um, I'm, I'm just using the watch folder here i'm just uh, uh for the demonstration purposes basically yeah, yeah i understand so it, it, the watch folder or any other folder with your documents yes, can be it. selected okay. you okay. could actually say just include everything on my everything on the, you know, but then it will slow down your computer for a couple of hours i think okay Okay, we don't want that. So focus yes. on the research folders. Yes. Okay, so over to you. Yes, yeah, so yeah, just to give a rundown again of how this feature works. You don't have to create a new folder. Um, as I just said, if you have an existing folder where you've saved all your research, you can just select that. Um, for instance, I'm not sure what all is in my downloads now, but I'm going to add that as well. And it will then um, should import them as well. But yes, uh, in Science Direct itself, if you wanted me to just give an overview of that again, um, a quick way to download multiple articles is this way around. And then you can go and save them in your watch folder and from the watch folder, Mendeley will automatically um, pull it into it's uh, into your database. Option number two, if you just want to export one citation, again, you're looking for export or cite or something like that. You say export citation to RIS. And again, open with Mendeley desktop. But let's say your feature is not like that and it is set to save. Now I am going to save it under the downloads form. Now what you can do is you can just add an entry manually. You can say add files. And under your downloads, you need to look for the specific one that's been uh, downloaded just now. And this is this one. And we can just say open. And then it will automatically pull in all the data. 
what I did want to mention again that you need to always double check is that this pagination seems a bit strange. I doubt that this article is from page 102 to 669. So that is always something that you need to check. You always need to check what you're putting in to Mendeley. Right. There is another option um, as well. If you've got a book with you and you cannot find any information with it, or let's say it's a school policy document that's never been officially published or something in that line, you can add a men an entry manually as well. And basically it's the same uh, story. You can say it's a book, let's say, and then you just fill in the details. So now I'm just gonna take a book that I know the details of. So the author is Maria. The year is going to be 2016. Pages there isn't necessary for a book. The city that it was published is in Pretoria. And the edition is the second edition. Just importantly, if you do have an edition of a book, just write it like that. Don't put an ed there or something like that. Uh, the Mendeley will automatically add that. And the publisher is Fun Skyk. And then you'll have your information here. So there are very many different ways of importing sources to Mendeley. Um, the important bits uh, to mention is, uh, again, always look out for the um, RIS symbol. Um, the other option that you would have, uh, especially with Science Direct or some other, other databases, is the Mendeley Web Importer that I referred to earlier as well. And this is also an easy one. You need to sign in the first time that you use it. And sometimes it just signs you out automatically. And you can select all of them. And then you can select in which page you want. Do you want it just in general? Or do you want, where do you want to put them? I'm just going to say like that. So I'm going to say add. And interesting that it has failed now. That is, again, I think the problems at Mendeley's side today. If things like this happen, just try again in a couple of hours. It might very often just be a server issue or something like that. Okay. So in terms of getting the records into Mendeley, are there any questions or anything that anybody wants me to just go over again? Okay, so Krishna, hi, it's Karina. Um, I've had a direct message from Zora who's in the in the webinar and she has a comment question about entering um, authors and I find for me it's a very good comment because I always struggle a lot with making sure my authors are correct and in the right format so Zora can I hand over to you would that be possible let's oh um Amolsha, can you help us to unmute Zora? Um, <laughs> I know that's a setting I didn't do, and I'm not entirely sure. Okay, wait, Murphy's Law. I'm just going to go down. So, hi. I think I'm. I think I'm good. unmuted now. Good. Good. Oh, hi. Hi. Um, yeah, I just wanted to comment on the fact that I noticed recently when I used Mendeley. Um, for an article that if I didn't save, um, say I had two references by the same author, uh, if I didn't save the author's names the same on all of those different references, or sort of standardize that in the desktop version, then um, it saved it as different authors. So if you, for example, put the full, the full first name on, on one of your uh, references and then you put uh, just an initial on another one, it, it, it might save it as different authors and obviously you would want to group your authors. So. Mm. Does that make yes. sense? Yes, absolutely. And here is an example of how that happens. Um, so here, Mendeley, this little filter by authors here to the left, shows all the authors that Mendeley is recognizing, but here is an RR aren't and another RR aren't, but Mendeley is recognizing them as two different ones simply because they were uh, there were spaces put in this uh, this one. 
So let's do that. And now it will disappear and now it will only recognize one or or aren't there. And Sorry to do this. Is it possible to um, show how you navigate to the filter by authors function? I don't think I caught that. Really? Uh, it's usually this default. Oh, uh, you know what? Are you using the reference manager or Mendeley desktop? I'm using the desktop, but I am on a Mac, so it might display differently. It might be. Um, I'm thinking, yeah, it's usually here at the bottom left corner is there, the, there are these filter options where you can filter by authors or by your tags or so on. Um, but I'm, uh, I'm going to share my email address at the end. So Apologies, send me a screenshot. I oh, just kidding. found it. Um, okay. There's a little thing on, um, on the very bottom left, oh, it's on your screen too. Uh, it's grayed out on your screen. Oh, very yes, that there. Little if you, okay, if okay. that's not clicked, then it doesn't um, pick up that thing. Thank you. Okay. Well, that's actually worthwhile to know. So for everybody else to take note of also. So here's a couple of, here you'll immediately see. So this, my reference list is a very messy one and uh, for very specific purposes because I'm using it for demonstrations. But for instance, what's happening here, ooh, here we've got nearly 30 different authors, but it is big and uh, Mendeley is treating that one a bit strangely as well. And as well, uh, uh, and those are the things that you need to keep an eye out for. Even this one, AAVV is also incorrect. And one has a question, how did that happen? Why is that there? And so, and this is again, what happens when you just import uh, your reference, but you never actually check uh, the accuracy thereof. Also, once you've done a filter or a search like this, always make sure that afterwards you just click on this clear button because otherwise we won't be able to see your other references. Now, while I was looking at that, there's another thing. So you can sort your references per um, folders uh, to keep them uh, track. But a very nice other feature is to tag your sources. So you could say here, let's say, I'm going to just say ADA in front, just so we know which tag it is. Let's say chapter, Two. So now you know this article is relevant for chapter two. Um, and let's say here, ADA conclusion. Introduction. And now the other nice thing is what, here where you would filter by authors, you could say filter by my tags. And now you see we've got different tags that I've used now so far. You click on introduction and it shows you those ones, conclusion or chapter. So the ones that has been tagged. Right, okay, so we are running a bit short on time. Um, so the next step that everybody, uh, that I want everybody to do if they haven't yet is to click on tools and say, install MS Word plugin. So it is going to prompt you to close applications that are open at the moment, and then it will automatically close them. And then you should get this little message saying citation plugin for Microsoft Word installed. The next thing that I need you to do is to go to view and citation style. And now you'll see here is a list of the default st styles that are available. Our Stellenbosch University Harvard style is currently a bit on the faulty side. So we're just using the University of Cape Town Harvard because they are basically the same except for tiny, tiny little differences. Um, but you could also, let's say you are looking for a specific style that your university has a specific style. You can click on get more styles. You'll see these are the ones that's all been installed. You can say get more styles here, and then you can search for it. So I'm just for example, going to look for Northwest University Harvard, and there you have it. And then you can install that and use that going forward as well. But for now, I'm just going to use the UCT one. Now that's been selected. And now we can go to Word. So 
So now you're writing and you're referencing in your document is, okay, so let's say this sentence needs a citation. And now let's put in a citation. So to find where your Mendeley details would be uh, is under references, you'll see this Mendeley Cytomatic. This is the plugin that's just been installed uh, via the Mendeley desktop application. Now we can insert a citation. Um, I'm just going to look for a random one and I'm gonna put this in like that. And there you see it is automatically formatted and added. But what do you do to add page numbers? So you see if, if you, anywhere you click on the citation, you'll see this little button that was insert citation is now turned into edit citation. You click on that, you click on the source there again, and here's the page pagination. And you'll see, you can also suppress the author here. And there's a very uh, good reason for that, but I'm not going to do that now. But there you'll see the page numbers has automatically been added. So, yeah, let's say you want to say according to someone, or this person says, um, according to, now I'm going, uh, excuse me. Let's look for Maria. Again, this doesn't look right. So what you can do, and this is another nice feature of um, Mendeley, is you can uh, delete something in the citation. And then if you click out of it, you'll see this little pop-up coming that says, this citation has been manually edited. And then it asks you whether you wanna keep the manual edit or not. Then you just say, keep the manual edit, and you can just say Maria. And this is also a way for you to add the page number. And you can do that. If you want to add multiple people, multiple sources. So then we're going to look first for, let's choose that one. And then you can say, as you can see there is additional reference. And then it will also automatically format it as um, it should appear in a document. And then once that is finished, uh, you can at any place where you go, let's say you want to uh, create the reference list on a next page. So we put in a page break and then we say insert bibliography. And here you'll see um, the information appears as is. So part of the faulty little things that happens with Mendeley because it is a bit tricky. So you'll see here is this looks a bit funny. Um, and remember when I said that you don't have to add ED when you indicate the addition of a document. Now here now this this entire reference is very very faulty. It's not an edited book, so there shouldn't be editors or things like that. But to, if I'm going to fix this here now, let's say there, I'm just going to say eighth edition and I'm going to remove these guys because they shouldn't be there. So now it looks a bit more correct, but look what happens if I quick click on refresh now. Everything that I just changed goes back. So unfortunately, where you can make changes in in-text citations by just typing over them, this is, doesn't work in the reference list itself. And that is something you need to uh, always keep in mind. So any issues in the reference list need to go be and fixed in, um, in Mendeley itself. So this is the one that I just cited. So I know, Morrison, Kay, or Keith, and then Mannion. 
I can't remember now what his name is. So I'm just going to say Almanian. I'm going to remove these editors. And even something like that, see that little space with that little mark there? That is also something that you will have to remove because otherwise Mendeley is going to put it in as is like that. Right, but it should now be better. And now we can say refresh. And there it automatically adjusts it and it is the correct version of how this should be referenced. And that, in a nutshell, is the basics of Mendeley. I uh, know there is still quite a bit, and uh, we have some time left to go over some more things, if any of you would like. Um, a final thing I just want to point out is that once you have finished working on your document, and you are basically, the next step is just going to be to submit it and to print it, uh, you need to submit your document without these Mendeley fields that they are active. So in order to do that, you will click here on export as, and then you just say without Mendeley fields, and you will be prompted to create a new document and you need to save the existing document. And then you'll have that copy. And the benefit of that is, let's just say this one somewhere random, and say this one somewhere random is now, no, this is the wrong one. Where's the one that I just had? Well, that's annoying. But the benefit of that would be then, once the, it's been exported and uh, there's no more fields active, you can go and make minor changes in your, docu um, in your reference list and those changes will not be reset. But, you won't be able to continue import inserting citations because you've already now put in everything. If you uh, miss anything or if you create a new um, citation now with Mendeley, it's going to generate a completely new reference list as well. So this is why this is something that you need to do right at the end. Right. Okay. And there I am going to stop. Uh, because I think it is quite a lot of information and I'd rather now just focus on what you guys would like me to cover again. Excellent. Thank you very much, Kirchner. I know we're a little bit over, but I, I did ask you to repeat that that one session. So Karina, I uh, think you're muted. Oh, I'm not muted. Can any Is anybody else struggling to hear me? I can hear you, Karina. Okay. Uh, Kirchner, can, sorry, I'm trying again. Oh, um, Murphy's Law. <laughs> Let me just... No, it was my volume. Okay. It was okay. My volume that okay. was muted. Sorry. Sorry, I was I was very thrown now. <laughs> Gertner, thank you. I've learned so so much, um, and I just love when all the good work that you put into making your references correct and and complete pays off when you start inserting them. And um, I just think from my experience, the place I always get stuck is with the authors, and. The, I'm going to start with the first question of my own is what should we rather do do you do you have like the um the reference that's up on your screen right now with Fuseni and Nulls do you put the surname comma name or surname comma initial what are initials full stop no full stop what what is the I know you have to be consistent throughout but what is the best practice? Oh, For sorry. Harvard, yeah, now I was okay. muted. <laughs> okay. For Harvard and APA, initials are fine. Okay. But there are certain uh, styles. Um, and if you held a gun to my head now and asked me which one it was, I won't be able to say. But I know there are styles that sometimes still want the full names of the authors to appear. Um, and Unfortunately, that also means there are journals that require that as well. Yeah. And so it is better to have the full names there and have them written out. Um, but 
I don't think it's a trend smash. I think that actually that is a trend that's being moved away from. And I think a lot of places are, I haven't seen that in a very long time. Um, so I would, I would say the safest method is to make sure that you just have the initials, uh, the surname and the initials. Okay. And, and it yeah, doesn't, that, sorry, it doesn't matter with full stop. Um, probably not. Um, yeah, so Mendeley would usually uh, fix this itself, but the standard protocol is just to put the initial in or the full stop after each one. Okay. Um, okay. And then silly little things, even as tiny as make sure there isn't a space between them. Yes, yes. Um, and so, yes. then yep. being consistent throughout. Yeah, inconsistency is especially important. Mm. Okay, so that's me selfishly asking. Zara, I can see your hand. I'm just gonna go through one or two questions that we've had since the, the start now of the, of the webinar. Kirchner, if you're ready, mm. um, I'd like to start reading them. Um, so Airi Senga asks, does Mendeley automatically detect duplicates like articles, reports, and books? And then a follow-up question from somebody else had been, um, how do you remove duplicates? And how do you remove duplicates? Or how do you remove a file permanently? So does it detect duplicates? How do we remove duplicates? And how do we remove files permanently? In a lot of cases, if you import a bunch of articles, Mendeley will sometimes detect that you've got duplicates. But there is also a feature here under tools, check for duplicates. Mm. Oh, OK. So it's actually tools and drop down, check for duplicates. OK. Yes. And here you'll see um, now it's going to take me through the entire list of the different ones. And you basically have to check and see. So it would say, um, there are no, it will highlight first whether there are any conflicting fields. If there aren't, then you can just say confirm merge. Okay. And so let's do all those. Oop, ah, I wonder if I can undo that. No, ah, duplicates have conflicting fields. This is okay. what I'm curious about. Okay. So then you need to go and check now. So what is the case? Uh, where is the one that's conflicting? And it's probably the citation key. And now, oh yeah, then if you double click on it, it expands to the two different versions. And there you'll okay. see there's okay. some variety. And then you need to choose now which one um, to, yeah. you know, or you could actually just say confirm merge. And Four then excludes. it will add, yeah. Yeah. yes. Yeah. Wonderful, that's a really neat. Mm, no, it is quite handy. Yeah. Um, the next and, question yeah. was, how do we um, remove the duplicates? I think that's been covered. And then how yes. do we permanently remove an article or a source from the database? You, you can basically either just click on it, say, click on delete, or delete? you can, uh, well, uh, on your keyboard. Uh, so you ah, can just okay. press the de okay. delete keyboard okay. button, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Or you can click on it and you can drag and drop it. Okay. And then it will go and lie here. And it also removes the PDF from your database. It will, yes. Perfect, um, wonderful. So that drag and drop feature is important also for if you want to uh, put um, uh, sources in a specific uh, folder or a group or so. So to select multiple articles, you can just hold down control and then select the ones that oh, you want to. Oh, multiple selection. Add. Excellent, and so then, control and click, yep. Yes. Now I'm just going to drag and drop it to ADA. So, and now if I say synchronize, whoever is part of this group then will also be, uh, be able to view mm. these ones. And also if they had PDFs attached, those PDFs would also become available. So it's um, great for collaborations, wonderful. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent, um, okay, good. So I think that has been, sorry? Yeah, so then also it will also pick up what you deleted here, and then it will remove them from your cloud um, records as well. Good. All right, next question. Good. So Lenore Bredekamp asked, how do I create references if I'm working with old newspaper clippings as a resource? Okay, so old newspaper clippings would go, it will have to be a manual edit. So okay. we'll go to add entry manually. Then we need to look for a newspaper article. I'm just going to use my name. 
So the publication, let's say uh, just randomly the conversation year 2021, page six, or well, let's just say page three doesn't matter. So the other things that are important here is for a newspaper article is to add the day of the uh, clipping. So let's say it is 7 November. Oh, wait, 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 wrong. Uh, okay. And you can abbreviate it like that uh, to three letters. Um, I think that just because references can become incredibly lengthy at times. Mm -hmm. And then obviously a link to the article. Um, if it, well, if it's an electronic newspaper one, if it isn't, then obviously you won't have that. Okay. And then we can just say save. And let's import it. I just want to see if everything looks correct. Oh, I didn't put in a title for that. Okay, so oh, that looks fine. But let's quickly just put in a title. Said no one ever. <laughs> oh, if you're a librarian. <laughs> <laughs> and then we can just say refresh and let's see. There we go. Okay, so Amazing. what bothers me there is even though there is a month tab, it doesn't appear there mm -hmm. and it was supposed to. So quick bypass for that is, let's just go here again. All right, just give the page hold up. So this is again something that will have to be checked afterwards because it's it's supposed to appear there and it's supposed to especially appear after the conversation uh, or the title of the journal. So pages for a newspaper wouldn't be less important. I would rather than be flexible here and say 7 November there mm. um, because I know that is now where the field is going to lie. Okay. So you can play around with the fields if you know, okay, so this is roughly what the layout is going to be. Then you can put in information that's not technically that fields required information, if that makes sense. So now, yes, now I've put it there. Mm. So it does say 7 November now, um, and that should be fine. Um, but I actually need to go and double check and this is also a worthwhile source to look at uh, for anybody, I think, because I think it's quite a comprehensive list. But remember that it's specifically tailored for how we reference at Stellenbosch University. So on the library homepage, here under quick links, referencing. Okay. So again, then you'll just yeah, yeah, work with the link that we supplied earlier. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. So the library homepage. And I think, let's see, Harvard, Stellenbosch examples. And here you'll see is a long list of examples of what it should look like. So article, newspaper with an author. So here is what it would look like. So we do have the date there. The date is written out. Again, that's not a fixed rule. You can do it the one way or the other, just be consistent. Yep. And then, but I do see the page number page is number. added there as well. Okay. So that means that this Mendeley field or is uh, the exact layout will not be 100% correct. And unfortunately, that is why we are having problems with our own Stellenbosch style, okay. um, because it's a very finicky coding system that you have to work with yep. in the background. It's not for everyone. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm also checking my colleague here, Brian. Thank you for, for pasting the questions in. Um, so. Kirchner, you mentioned this in the middle, and I feel like it's in the beginning, and I feel like it, it needs to be repeated. And we're running out of time, so let's see how many questions we can still take. Is there a major difference between Mendeley Desktop and Mendeley Reference Manager Online? Okay, so not exclusively. Let's quickly, um, I, I wish I had time now to uh, download it and to show the difference. Um, there's just some features that are missing. Um, so, and that is why we generally just don't uh, go for it right now. The same with Mendeley site. Uh, Mendeley site is very useful if you work 
in a collaborative word online environment. Mm. So let's say you're working word online, then you can't use Mendeley desktop at all. Okay. So, but Mendeley site does um, provide for that. But again, let's just to show you what the problem with Mendeley site is, is it's getting an average rating of 1.4 out of five at the Ooh, moment. Okay. It's very glitchy. Um, so, okay, so I'd rather leave it alone until it's, it's yeah, more unless you really, yeah. unless you have a supervisor yeah. that insists on working okay. in an online environment, okay. then you can use Mendeley's site. Okay. And so, it is quite nice. I have yep. like, but it glitches very often and it's more frustration than anything else. We don't want that. So desktop um, and then, yeah, okay. okay so yeah, now, I think uh, for now, but you, uh, Honestly, it's personal preference. Mm. Um, I would, I actually managed to install it quite quickly now, but uh, ask me another question while I get this sorted out so long. Okay, so Lindsay Jones asks, Mendeley often doesn't insert the authors properly. For instance, if you referenced it above, it will say it all, but thereafter it puts in the authors where it should be the other way around, like fullest to start with and then it all later. Mm. How do we get the it all to work? I think that's quite a it, practical, yeah. It depends on the style. Um, it depends on the referencing style that you've selected. Okay. Um, so let's quickly look for a citation that has multiple authors, or at least three. No, this one. Is... Okay, so I'm going to look for Hagar. So with UCT and Stellenbosch Harvard, um, because there are one, two, three, four, five, six, um, the moment there are five or more authors, it all gets used from the very start. Okay. Um, if it's just three authors, so let's find an example of that. Because you must also check your specific referencing style and the version of the style to make sure yes. that you, that um, it's not just the system doing what it's been told. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. It, it usually uh, fits in with the style. Okay. Um, so let's insert that one quickly. So it's keen. So there it will now say that at least, and if mm. I put it in again, interesting. Now it's supposed <laughs> to actually do. I think maybe this is when we're gonna have to go to YouTube for. Yes. Um, unfortunately, that is now again, something that needs to go and be fixed at the, um, at the style itself. So this is now, this is where it gets very ah, technical. Okay, okay. But, and there's no time, unfortunately now, mm. but you can, if you right click here and you say and edit style. style. Okay, that's it. I think that's, and I, I can I can see it becoming quite complex. Yeah, no, it's a very, uh, just to show you what it looks like because you will be able to find resources mm. online on how to use mm. this. But then we're going to have uh, this information. You'll see here to the left. I mean, even I, who are familiar with it, still. I mean, I get mm. I get lost in here. Okay, so uh, try and find a style that's compatible that already exists that you don't have to mm, edit. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think I'm going to do two more questions. Dorothy and Gila asks. Sometimes you find that there are documents you need to cite that do not automatically have a type on Mendeley, like report, journal article. How do you manage this? Um, in cases like that, uh, for instance, one that I know that gets frequently used and one that there's not really a very nice um, uh, feature for is a government gazette, for instance, or a government okay. document. Okay. Um, so then what I usually select, uh, there is a report option, but even that isn't 100% nice, not, not according to how it should be done by the university, for instance, again. So I prefer to select something like generic. And then uh, let's say, uh, 
South African Schools Act. Policy on, I'm just gonna make random things so now. I think, and I'm also reading Lindsay's question, if Mendeley, well, you continue, please. Well, Mendeley doesn't have an option for executive brief, what we select then. So it looks like generic or government. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. And then also while you're typing, is Mac and Windows generally the same or they might be short? Um, there'll, be, there'll always be some differences. Um, yeah. Um, what's handy is on our library guide, there is a session specifically focusing on, um, yeah. on uh, that one. So let's quickly go to. Yeah, and then while you're doing that, Helen Amongin asks, if you have to use another referencing style initially, how can I change to Mendeley without distorting my references? So um, hmm. there's, it's not too difficult actually. So depending, uh, are, you, are you talking about a referencing style or uh, another reference uh, management software. I think it's style, not not software. Okay. No, yeah. Mendeley just fix uh, automatically corrects it as it should be. Um, just to show you how efficient it would be. So let's change this to where's Vancouver. Let's try Chicago. No. Um, no man, come on. Sorry, we're keeping you on your toes. I'm, I'm sorry about that. No, it's fine, it's fine. Yeah. And now you'll see it's automatically made it a numerical system. Okay. Interesting that this one, uh, because this one's been manually edited, now it's yeah. uh, it won't accept it. So you still but, have to go through it with a fine tooth comb. Mm, yeah. With yeah. everything, you still yeah. need to. Yeah. Um, and then, okay. So, so yeah, yeah. Just to go back to the reference manager to mm. show. So this is what it looks like. Um, it's in general, it is fine. It's got its little features and so on. Okay. Um, it's got the same ones here, but there's just some things that I just didn't find. Yeah, like for instance, here under file, there's a lot of features that's all of a sudden just not available anymore. Um, like the watch folder um yeah. where yeah. is the watch folder how do you do those things so it's just there's things missing for me here that um it's part of the reason why we don't want to use it just yet because i don't feel it's 100 percent um as good as the desktop yet it's it looks nicer it is more user friendly and if i'm correct it's a lot easier to um cite from here as okay. well um but again the one thing that you need to take note of it, um, you you should only have the reference manager or uh, uh, the desktop version installed. Okay. Um, avoid using both because both. They, they might conflict with each other and yeah. just cause a massive headache. I've had some syncing issues in the past, so I I hear you and I recommend that. I'm going to ask you one more question. Um, if if you have in your watch folder, you have other um, files like word and excel will it will mentally only select pdf or does it also import other files that's a good question and i do not have a straightforward answer for that i don't think so let's see quickly what happens if i unless you tell it to maybe what is excel's um exe no, exe is execution. Um, <laughs> Excel is Sorry? XLSX. Oh, XL. Yes, oh, thanks, there we go. Thanks, thanks. Amalta. <laughs> we read it every day. Um, yeah, but it's, yeah. Oh, it's looking at the wrong platform. Ah, stop. Now, let me just quickly, because time is running up, I know I will have an Excel folder somewhere or something. Well, let's put a Word document in and see. Oh, actually, I'm not supposed to do that. But stop extreme clients. No, no, no. Um, because this is a new laptop for me. Okay, so, so a lot of my stuff, <laughs> yeah, it's all on the cloud. Um, um, 
So let's see quickly. Let's just go and look at Google Drive here. My drive. Okay, I'm just going to use this attendance list. I, it's very out of date, but I hope nobody will be able to see anything on it in case there's data on it. So let's just see. Now we go to the watch folder, paste it. And now I'm just going to close that one and go back here. And yeah, so the reason for that is it specifically works with the metadata of the okay. PDF. Yeah. So yeah. In, in your PDF, if you click on the properties, um, let's just go back to that again, the watch folder. Because it also automatically populates the 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 site citation information. Mm. So it's been told to look for for certain information, I guess, and it yes, might not yes. recognize an Excel document. Yeah, it would be that. Um, and uh, but if you had the right metadata inserted in in the same properties areas, it probably would. Um, but it, if you had a list, let's say you had an Excel list of all the references that you've used so far and you want to import that as mm. is and hopefully generate a reference for each of those, uh, that will be a bit more complicated. Okay. There are ways to do it, but uh, it will be tricky. I'm going to stop you there, Kirchner. Um, do you mind Alrighty. just coming on to say bye to us? I... Uh, we we still have some outstanding information and colleagues if you would like to specifically have that address please email us at ada school and i'm also can pass on your your query um there are a few technical queries that i think will probably be easy to or easier to go and look on your lib guides guide mm -hmm. and we will share that out to everyone um on email when we share the youtube link of your presentation so it will be possible for everybody to um, to go back because I think some of it was if you're seeing it the first time it was quite quick and um, all of that. But Kirchner, we mm. thoroughly appreciate your time and your effort. Um, I have learned a lot. I'm sure as everybody else has. And um, we hope you have a good Wednesday afternoon and a fruitful week. And then yeah, we'll chat on email. Oh, great, thank you. It was a pleasure. And yes, obviously I'm more than willing to answer some queries that come my way. And yes, go and have a look at the recordings on the lip guide because mm -hmm. um, those are full length sessions. I think it's mm -hmm. about two hour sessions that we have on Mendeley on average. Um, so there is things that I probably only scanned over or so. Mm. And it's free and open to anyone. You don't have to be registered at yes, Salamash. Yes. So it's an amazing you can resource. Even go and look on our YouTube channel. Uh, we've oh, got wow. a couple of, especially videos from our recent research week and mm. other ones as well. Let me just quickly find the channel. Oh, you, link. You're, scoop, you're scooping our audience now, Kirchner. Okay? No? <laughs> Trying. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see quickly. SU libraries. If you if you can just post that in the chat, then we can mm. also be sure to distribute that in the in the follow up email. Yes, please. Yeah, yeah. No, I think well, we've got a very nice uh, Mendeley uh, mm -hmm. recording there, but we've got a couple of things on the literature review and so on as well. It looks very um, amazing. Yeah, it's just loading very slowly now. And also our latest library symposium. That's something maybe interesting to everybody, but we were just looking at the what exactly is the future of libraries. Okay, that's interesting. I'll, I'll go and have a look. I'm going to, but I'm, I'm not going to keep you guys. Oh, here we go. Finally. Sorry. It was taking a while to load now. I'm just going to paste it in the chat. Perfect. And yes, that will take us, uh, take you to there. Good. So thank you, everyone. Please join me in thanking Kirchner for his time, and we'll catch up with you on email. Great. Lovely. All right. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. Bye bye. Bye, everybody.